Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to generate higher order wave functions for the 1D quantum linear harmonic oscillator. So, up until now, we have done the we got the zeroth order wave function. We found out that there exists raising and lowering operators, and we also looked at the Hamiltonian. We got, we'll say, a dimensionless Hamiltonian, and and as a result, we got a dimensionless Schrodinger equation. So, what I'm going to do now is we know that the y minus d dy is a raising operator. It'll give me an energy of one unit higher than the previous energy. And we know that this is this wave function here, unnormalized, is uh, the zeroth order wave function in my oscillator. So if I apply this raising operator on this wave function, I should get the next highest wave function. So that means we have y minus c dy acting on, uh, we'll say, a times e to the minus y squared over 2. And that should give me my next highest wave function. So I'm going to call that, we'll say, u1 of y. Alright, so we're going to have, I'm going to ignore the a in fact, because it doesn't really matter, it's just a constant. So we're going to have y times e to the minus y squared over 2, minus, well, del del y of that would just be minus y, so that should be plus y, like that, and that's going to give us 2y e to the minus y squared over 2, like so. And this is going to be our unnormalized u1 of y. So that's the second highest wave function. So the next thing we need to do is find out what are the energies of this unnormalized wave function. So we need to fire it into the Schrodinger equation. So the question then you should you should probably have to ask yourself is, or you should ask yourself, is which which form of the Schrodinger equation do you, do you use? Do you use this one? Or do you use this one? One sec there now, you're just going to have to bear with me while I write out this, this tedious equation. Just want to correct this make sure that's correct y minus, yeah, that's correct. So which one do we use? And now in this case it does turn out that we're 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 raising an energy. So we use this with this one here where we have um is that correct? I mean yeah, we're we're raising an energy, but we use we use this form of the equation, and I'll be quite honest, I'm not too sure why it's this one rather than this one. So if somebody knows that, I'd be absolutely uh, I'd love to hear that. But in this case, anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to plug this u1 of y into this form of the Schrodinger equation and see what happens. All right, so bear with me now and I do that. I'm going to do it reasonably quickly, I think. There's no point, uh, no point being slow at all. So, or slower, should I say. So we have, we have y plus ddy. We have y minus ddy. We have... Um, let's say 2y e to the minus y squared over 2 and that's going to be equal to um, 2 epsilon plus 1 times uh, 2y e to the minus y squared over 2 so it does need to be careful with your with your differentiation other than that it's just grand okay so you have y plus d dy again and then we have we'll say here we have 2y squared e to the minus y squared over 2 and then we need to get d dy of that well this is d dy of a product all right, so now our product u dv dx plus, or it's a uv prime plus v prime u. That's the uh, that's the product rule. So let's go ahead and do that. So we get, I'm going to say, uh, so we're going to get now uh, we're going to have um, uv prime. Actually, there's a minus there. So I'm going to say it's two y times the differential of that, which is going to be uh, y t minus y e to the minus y squared over two. So that's going to become a plus y. That's become going to become a square. And then we're going to have minus 2, one second now, we're going to have minus 2 times e to the minus y squared over 2 times, we'll say, the differential of this, which is 1, like that, equals all the other stuff there. All right, so then we're going to get ddy of that, or we'll say y plus ddy of that. So we're going to get 2y cubed e to the y minus y squared over 2. And actually, in actual fact, let me... Um, let me just tidy this up first because I suppose it's easier if we do it this way. So this is going to be 4 times y squared e to the minus y squared over 2 minus 2 times e to the minus y squared over 2. And all of that has y plus del del y on top of that. We're operating on that. So we have 4y cubed, 4y cubed e to the minus y squared over 2 minus 2y e to the minus y squared over 2 plus del del y of this which is going to be and now this is a product again, okay, so this is going to be a bit painful. 
So I'm going to go for, say that's 8y, e to the minus y squared over 2, that's the first part. And then it's going to be minus 4y cubed, e to the minus y squared over 2, like that. Okay, and then over here, this isn't a product rule, so this is very straightforward, plus 2y, e to the minus y squared over 2. And I suppose, look, if I am, um, yeah, I may as well just do that, just show you this product here, just in case your, your differentiation is... Um, not very strong. Okay, so we have 4y squared e to the minus y squared over 2. Okay. Alright, like that. And I want to get d dy of it. Obviously you could skip this if, if, you, if you know exactly what it did. So I'm going to take this as u, this is v. So uv prime is going to be 4y squared and then e to the minus y squared. So we differentiate it in exponential, just get the exponential back and then you multiply by the derivative of your argument. So in this case we need the deri derivative of this, like that, okay, and that's just going to be equal to minus 2y over 2, and that's equal to minus 2, or wait, no, it's equal to minus y. Alright, so we need to multiply by a minus there, so there's our minus y, and then we just do the, we do uv prime, or v u prime, so we have plus, we'll say, 4 e to the minus y squared over 2 times 2y, so that's going to be minus 4 um, y cubed e to the minus y squared over 2 plus 8y e to the minus y squared over 2. Alright, I know that, uh, that's that's probably boring you at this stage, but anyway, just for just for rigor, okay? So we're back up here, and what can we cancel? What do we get as a result of this? Uh, we get the following. So y cubed and y cubed here cancel. And we have 2y and 2y here, they cancel. And so we're left at 8y e to the minus y squared over 2 is equal to 2 epsilon plus 1 times um, 2y e to the minus y squared over 2. Get rid of the, the, we'll say the exponentials, get rid of the y. We have 2 epsilon plus 1 is equal to, we'll say, 4 when I bring across this. Um, then we're going to have 2 epsilon is equal to 3. Epsilon is equal to 3 over 2. But we know that epsilon is equal to e over h bar omega. Alright, and that means that e is equal to, oh, e is equal to 3 over 2 um, h bar omega. 3 over 2 h bar omega. Now the question you should ask yourself is, does that make sense? And I'm going to say that it does, and the reason is, this is the second order wave function. And I said to you at the very start that the, well, we, we showed that the lowest order wave function was h bar omega over 2. That was u0, or the energy according to u0. Now, I said that the jumps thereafter are in the jumps of h bar omega. So the next one, so if I add h bar omega onto that, we're going to get 3 over 2 h bar omega for u1. And if we add another h bar omega onto that, we get 5 over 2 h bar omega. So in this case, this is u, u1, so we get uh, 3 over 2 h bar omega, which is correct. Alright, so uh, thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.